time for another report. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to Earth and all that. I come to you now from the fireplace in the living room. I've got together all the remaining batteries. Haven't seen a chopper in a while. Well, things aren't going entirely to plan. There's always something new with this apocalypse. I have no idea how much you know already. Surely some of it. I've got a few bullet points to go over on how things went from vacation to nightmare. At least that means we start in the good bit. I finished last time with my fire in the park. Took a week off after that. I had my next fire planned out. The city's dog racing track. Big bowl to pour the dead into. Cycled over there, easy enough, since the zombies had all gone over to the park after the last fire. The city was deserted in some sections, so I had all the time I needed to set up. Then I made a racket with a pistol to bring in some kindling. Once the smoke spreads around, the vectoring gets going, and it's burn, burn, burn. Crowds of them. I remember the heat of it so well. Didn't do the dog racing track any good, but there isn't a dog left alive anywhere in Kentucky, far as I can tell. The bacteria had the manners to simply kill them, leaving us to envy the dead, as ever. Another quiet week went by after that. I let my guard down. I kept roaming about the west end of the city willy-nilly, collecting matches and chocolate brownie mix, the essentials. Then one day I came out of the house and realized the zombies had come back en masse. I must have been spreading my scent too liberally, marking my territory and all that. One slip up and they pinned me to a wall and tucked right on in. It's an experience I had hoped not to repeat. Yet, as you well know, it's no permanent impediment to me. I suppose you could say I was used to it by now. I think the bacteria helps me to not feel it. It rebuilds my nerves incorrectly. Or perhaps it struggles to read my old and crusty DNA. I didn't die, and so I remain a dead, like I'd cruelly wished on so many others from the comfort of my studio. Death really isn't that bad, as long as it's a one-and-done affair. Soon I was driving another stolen car back from some dark corner of the suburbs, finding that around a week had passed, and that fortunately my prior blaze had kept the vectoring process active while I was rehabilitating. But also I had missed some mail from Eastcom demanding that I get back to work. I'm not allowed sick days, eh? That vector's union of one isn't getting me anywhere. I was forced to spend three more days healing scars and learning to run again, stuffing my face with all the chocolate brownies I could barbecue into existence. It was more like brownie mix stew. By then, the situation had gone right back to maximum danger. The whole city had been overrun once again, and that's doubtless fantastic news for your city, which is hopefully now marginally less overrun. Only a couple hundred million more to burn, and you'll have a clear run to the pudding mix too. I had work to do. Eastcom had been in the HQ at some point, and kindly left me a custom-made belt-fed M16 rifle. I stared at the thing for ages. I wasn't really an M16 kind of guy. But hell, I hadn't tried fishing before being a vector. Might as well really dip my foot in the waters of apocalyptic life and fire a machine gun at someone. And this really was a machine gun, with all the adjustments Eastcom's techies made. A weapon designed for a world when you couldn't stop shooting until a thousand targets were down. The magazine was essentially a giant backpack. It took some getting used to. At first, I couldn't hit a damn zombie at five paces with the thing. And of course, avid Dead Files fans will know that firing a gun makes the zombies really zone in on you. Somewhere along the way, that became a good thing for us all. So far away I did. I do boast that I got the hang of it by the end of my first backpack of bullets, raiding the area around the HQ. Then I slipped and slid over all the cartridge cases on the floor as I lunged for an old police truck parked up down the street. I'd had my eye on this old bucket for a while. Decades old, black and white colour scheme, boxy shape that got the job done no matter how it looked doing it. But enough about me. This truck had a space in the back for all the crates of firebombs I was going to need for my next job. The keys were in the door. Louisville Police Department, ladies and gentlemen. I drove out east, past the charred remains of the city common, then turned north towards my target. Another of my increasing ribbon of alma mater's Louisville State University. Its large campus was another of those open spots on the map that makes a genocidal arsonist drool. 
a pedestrianized paradise that would ensure zombies for miles could come tackle the burning questions of academia. And free of charge, too. You'd almost forget it's America, but I was stomping around with a hair trigger M16 and a hand welded 2000 round drum mag tied to my back. Only thing left to complete the picture was to light everything up like the 4th of July. Molotovs might be a Finnish invention, but let's slap a little flag on the bottle and throw them in the American melting pot all the same. Bring me your tired and huddled masses, my M16 called out to the city, and the response was quite nearly overwhelming. I... Uh, it's so damn cold. You know, ever since I've been in this city, and before too, I'd say, my body has gotten stronger. 2,000 bullets weighs a fair bit to a regular human. I hiked those things up the stairs of the main lecture building like I was bouncing on the moon. Whenever the zombies are nearby, this effect intensifies. My fear dulls, energy swells, and the sense that I've been turned into a killing machine becomes hard to ignore. There is a hint of who I was once in the background, like in that lecture hall, I was having thoughts rush back to me from the smell of the old-fashioned wood panelling and the sight of all the posters lining the walls. It wasn't that long ago that human civilization was carrying on, yet here it all shares the same spot in my brain as ancient Roman mosaics, all things never intended for the likes of us. What we as a race of clever apes once were is gone, and what I was only months ago is gone too. Maxwell Bravo I call myself, but I am Maxwell Bravo the fourth or fifth, remade imperfectly, and even the first one was hopped up on poisoned scotch and fed lie after lie by smiling scientists. No, I've been dead a very long time, I think. As long as our nations and society. This day, this blast of the rifle, this breath, is another step on a road for which fewer and fewer people have seen the map. Sorry I got a little off track there. It's hard to think straight at the moment, and hard to know what to say. I don't really talk to people now. I was talking about the university, yes. That was a nasty business in the end. After tearing up the concourse with the rifle and my trusty baseball bat, and starting a few fires in the outbuildings, I was essentially corralled into the main building by the horde's advances. I locked myself in and shot from the windows for a while. The zombies came at the doors in a huge mass, a battering ram that pushed against the wooden double doors like it was a real medieval siege. The zombies at the front were crushed by the weight of those pushing from behind, and some clambered over each other to smash the windows on the second floor. They all got in soon enough. I decided to set fire to the main atrium, where most of them were congregating. A firebomb spread its goodness over the wooden panelling in a snap. I was on the landings over this atrium, shooting at any beasts with the wherewithal to mount the staircases. I didn't notice how much smoke I'd breathed in until it struck me that, despite the blaze in front of my eyes, my vision seemed dark. I didn't cough, because the hives didn't let me cough anymore. A flaw, I believe. A weakness that I'd stumbled upon so clumsily that it looked set to ruin the whole vectoring enterprise. I say this because it was only when my consciousness was fading that I noticed how huge the fire had become. There was certainly no way out of the building. The zombies were fueling it as usual, completely filling the lower level wall to wall. Below every window was a pit of them, a maelstrom of fire and claws. I suspect I could have gone up to the roof or attic if I'd planned this a bit better. I was struggling to see much of anything. The floors below me began to blacken and spew precious embers to illuminate the smoke. I wasn't scared or worried. My only concern was, had I done enough? I couldn't really tell how many zombies I had attracted. I had a good feeling about the university though, since the tasteful and august wooden interiors were going to burn for days without a doubt. Paper everywhere, oil tanks and propane sometimes. All good. The only finishing touch the blaze needed was myself, apparently. As for all my stumbling about, I could find no escape. I decided to simply keep on vectoring as long as I could. In the last moments of my memory, I barricaded myself in an office and draped my body beside the open window. I would have lasted longer with it closed, as smoke was pouring in from the pyre of undead right outside but I needed it open so that when I turned, I would have a way out if my barricade didn't burn down. Considerate of me, eh? I'm no dead. 
I prepare for my afterlife well, even at the cost of dying a little faster. I doubt I'm the first to take that path. Well, when this life doesn't have much for you, one might as well get ready for the next and then shuffle off pronto. But as someone who has died and been reborn a few times, I don't necessarily recommend it. Didn't ask for it, wouldn't ask for it. And after humankind spent so many thousands of years wishing for this power. Now, as usual, I will have to bring you forwards to my next memory. From what I've seen, the university was completely consumed by my antics, so my body must have been placed under serious duress. It survived enough to return to me, as before, obviously. I woke up a week later in the HQ, my arms and legs not fully restored. This was unpleasant, I will say no more of it. It was another day before I could move, and then another before I noticed Eastcom were buzzing me on the radio constantly. Do you know what they wanted to tell me about? The weather. Yes. Oh, do go on, Madam Director. I would love to know the chance of snow this year. Well, that's what I thought at the time. This turns out to be a big deal. I am cold, ladies and gentlemen. Colder than you can ever understand. So, on to my final topic. Winter in Paradise. Here's how vectoring works, or doesn't, when things get chilly. As I said already, there's always something new with this apocalypse. That winter had hit during my recovery period was easy to determine, even without a drunk and crackly voice in Lexington telling you as much. It was cold. No two ways about it. The warning I received implied that this would be a problem, because the lab rats my creators were experimenting with now had shown dire reactions to low temperatures. Long story short, the bacteria doesn't like it when it's cold, and makes its hosts feel very much the same way. They were saying I might be forced to sleep all winter like a hedgehog or something. They were almost right. To prepare for this eventuality, I spent a day in the neighborhood with a stolen van. I loaded the back with all the food I could find, not knowing whether I'd be hungry in my sleep. God, I wish I'd taken it more seriously. Hunger and cold are my bedfellows. Now there's something humankind spent thousands of years trying to get away from with good reason. Even then I was struggling to move, and I knew that my own reaction to the cold was going to be abnormal. By the next day, December 17th, I was on the floor. And here I am to this very day. The cold. It's the be-all and end-all right now. That mild fall made me almost forget the fall of civilization is going to kill us all in ways completely unrelated to the monsters. It seems I get the worst of both sides as a vector. I am the one the monsters most want to eat, and the one most crippled by ice. I've managed to keep the inside of the HQ above freezing, mostly by burning whatever I can get my hands on. Getting my hands on things is the trouble, though. Once the bacteria sense the cold, they seize me up. It's like my arms aren't my own. Perhaps you've had a dream where you felt that sort of dissonance between your mind and your sleeping body. The desperate need to move, but the chemicals in your brain have paralyzed you for your own good. That's what it's like all the time for me now. I know I don't suffer alone. It's snowing all the time, and the zombies seem to try and get inside to avoid it. They aren't at all fussed about attacking me, and according to Eastcom, that's pretty much put the vector program on hold. As you must have noticed out there, it does also render the danger from zombies rather easy to handle. The zombies are all huddling together and leaving us well alone, as I understand it. So there's one solution. Nuke the skies dark and let an ice age clear the undead away. You can bet your very bottom dollar that Eastcom have at least tabled the idea. For the next week, I tried to move around the HQ as much as I could. Used up the last of the glass bottles I'd collected for cocktails. I got outside now and again to see how things were going. Slow and cold was the answer. A few times I wrapped up until I was twice my size, then weeded out the garden or sat in the boathouse with a fishing rod. All I can say about it is that I felt cold. I wasn't shivering, my body wasn't even cold, it was only negative five or so, yet the bacteria were having none of it. I was doing the opposite of shivering, in fact, being stuck still, frozen in name only. The one feeling that broke through the cold was the frustration. I was eating through the canned food at a rapid pace, cutting it with carrots from the garden and whatever random bags of dried beans or nuts I'd stashed in the kitchen over the weeks. I was still cooking it all on the barbecue, 
the heat from which livened me up just long enough to properly feel how hungry I was. It all tasted of nothing at all. Bacteria's got my taste buds on the go slow as well. I dare say a man with less professional experience getting this voice working the grindstone at all hours would end up unable to speak. But Maxwell Bravo's a voice booking that gets the work done no matter the situation. Now accepting payment in machine gun bullets and garbled promises that the world isn't quite over. Mostly though, I was sitting alone. Read a book, throw it in the fire. I needed the heat from one book to be able to turn the pages on the next. It wasn't enough to stave off the insanity in the end, if that's what I'm experiencing. I haven't really got into this, but it's been growing for a while. Memories that aren't mine. I see a building in the city and I remember my life there. A life that certainly did not take place on my watch. Because this isn't my watch anymore, is it? I think, I wonder sometimes, you know, if bacteria from someone else got into my brain, it might see differences as damage and start to change the wires over in there and... Who knows? I haven't spoken to a person who wasn't trying to kill me in months. And Eastcom doesn't do much to break out of that category either. I think I'm owed a little insanity. It's only because I can hardly believe I'm alive that I don't go absolutely stir-crazy from the fear and misery of everything that has befallen our planet. That, and I've still got work to do. Or I did, until I was made redundant by the bloody weather. <laughs> Speaking of redundant, I've been rambling on again, haven't I? I did have one more remarkable outing, if you're interested. It was a few days back on good old Christmas Eve. The general sense of horror really gets to you on days that remind you strongly of how nice we used to have it, don't you think? I was so angry at everything that I thought I'd try out the one other way of keeping warm in winter that you've probably been screaming at me for a while. Burn zombies. Do what I do best. The Christmas Eve bonfire plan was a go. I went out at midday to see if I could convince the neighbours to do the same. Sure enough, what remains of the surrounding housing proved to be full of sheltering shamblers. I think they were as interested in heat as I. Out they came for a modest slaughter. Nothing like my prior blazes, more of a friendly get-together with the local community. This was hardly vectoring, just plain old burning people for warmth. How did it make me feel? Tired. I won't say it was actually warm, only less cold. So there you go. Sorry to those who burned up only to receive that flat review of their performance. I found myself utterly exhausted from a short period of walking around out there. I came inside and crashed on the couch. Woke up to find it was that special time, midnight of Christmas Eve. Santa would be down my chimney any moment. I decided not to stick around for it. Even though it was a good measure below freezing outside, I opened the back door and sauntered out. Still, cold, alone. It was everything you'd expect. Somehow, I thought that going outside would get me away from my thoughts, but alas, it seems those things travel with you. I was beset by these false memories. It's hard to explain. If I close my eyes right now, I can see them. I can recall people I suspect I've never met. If I think of my family, it conjures images of different people from one moment to the next and brings a kaleidoscopic buffet of feelings. Out there on that frozen Christmas morning, I was telling myself that things were okay. The loneliness and loss of a hundred different people raged in opposition. It didn't used to be like this. It's the cold. It's still the cold. Here's the silver lining. I'm not really me anymore, so all this nonsense isn't happening to me. At least some of these memories must be me. It's hard to say. Very hard to say indeed. The warmth of the fire makes it go away for a while. So, roll on spring and its promise of permanent amnesia. Huzzah. So I enjoyed a late night of thinking about all this, sitting on a neighbor's pier out over the river. The water compels me just as much as the zombies these days. The bacteria doesn't aerosolize so well in the cold, yet it was enough to keep me alive if immobilized out there. You might be wondering if I was hoping the cold would finish me off. I'm wondering that too. Here I am though, so we must all move on. I pulled myself home at some point and resumed my watch. Eating and burning took up most of the day. I would go out and look for fully grown vegetables in the garden when I could, and make sure the streets were still clean. No zombies had vectored into my fire. 
it's the holiday season for us all. One is tempted to speculate on whether they had a similarly thoughtful time to me. But one must not, I assure you. And all that brings me almost up to date. The most notable thing that happened since Christmas has been today. It's New Year's Eve, and I'm sick as a dog. One that didn't die already, that is. Food poisoning. I knew it was going to happen. I was careless, since cooking out at the barbecue is stupidly hard now. The best way to describe going outside is to imagine you are walking underwater. It's heavy, slow, and scary. Looks like some of the plants I've been roasting out there weren't entirely edible. My body would prefer the flesh of the infected, I expect. Carrots and marinara sauce might convince the bacteria I'm crunching bones and slurping blood. But it's the ordinary gut bacteria giving me hell tonight. I was sick already, and I think my pals in there are putting together another one to celebrate the coming of a fresh new year in our storied history. Rest, that's my new year's resolution. Hibernate all this madness away. I've got food for a few more weeks, so with any luck the cold will lift by then. Or, if I was to be very cheeky, I might ask that Eastcom come by and help me out? Too much. Wouldn't want you to catch anything from me, would I? Well, you can hear me. I know that. Do let me know if there's anything you can do. Or anything I can do. Preferably something I can do curled up in the freezing dark. <laughs> I guess mutter into a microphone is exactly that. So I've really taken the initiative there. Happy New Year. Did it happen already? No, it doesn't matter. What a year it's been. There'll never be another one like it. We can be absolutely sure of that. I would say we'll never forget it but I think it might be better if we all did. Remember the dead files, that's the important thing. Remember how all this was nobody's fault, almost nobody's fault. And of course, do not be caught dead, acting like a dead, like I am right this very second. I am your hero and cautionary tale. This planet's a cautionary tale now. Just gotta go to sleep. Just gotta... I'll save the world. We all will. Got up. Is that... Is that a helicopter?